armed with these sorts of principles, you could now look at all sorts of interesting domains of animal behavior and understand what the behavior is going to be like by using these. Okay, we start with the first example. Here we return to these guys, and we have one species here, and knowing this guy had a penis and this one nursed, we've got an adult male and an adult female, what is it that you can conclude in this species males are a lot bigger than females? So let's state it here as there's a big ratio of males to females. Meanwhile, in the next county, you've discovered another species where somebody's got a penis and somebody else is nursing, and their skulls are the exact same size. Oh, here's the species where there's no difference in body size between males and females. Okay, so let's begin to see, just using the principles we've got in hand already, what sort of stuff we can predict. Starting, okay, which of those species, in one case, you have males being a lot bigger than females, in one case, you've got males being the same size as females. In which of those species, the first one like this, or the same size ones, in which ones would you expect to see more male aggression? First one. Okay, how come? Their bodies are built for it, which begins to tell you something. Their bodies are built for it, maybe because females have been selecting for that. You will see higher levels of aggression in species like this where there's a big body size difference and much less of it in these guys. Next, you now ask how much variability is there in male reproductive success. In one of these species, all the males have one or two kids over their lifetime. In another species, 95% of the reproducing is carried out by 5% of the males. A huge variability skew in male reproductive success. Which species do you get the every male has a couple of kids and that's about it and all equally so? Which one? Second one. How come? Because these guys are being selected for aggression. If they're fighting, there is going to have to be something they're fighting for, differential reproductive access. Okay, so you see more variability in species that look like this. Next, females come into the equation. What do females want? What do females want in the species on the left versus the one on the right? The one on the right, you know, again, skulls the same size, same body size. On the left, what does the female want? What sort of male is the female interested in? Big, exactly. That's exactly the driving force on this. How come? Because she's not going to get anything else out of this guy. This guy is just going to like the present is going to be some sperm. It might as well be some good sperm, some genetically well-endowed sperm that makes for a big, healthy offspring, increasing the odds of her passing on copies of her genes in the next generation. What about in this species? What's females looking for? OK. Good. Hold on to that for a second, and let's jump ahead a few lines. One of the species, males have never been known to do the slightest affiliative thing with infants. They just get irritated and harass them and all of that. And the other, you have soccer dads who are doing as much raising of the kids as the females are. In which species do you get lots of male parental behavior? The one on the right. OK, so lots of male parental behavior here. So somebody just gave the answer here, female choice. What would you see in this species? You want big, muscular guys. You want whatever is selling that season for what counts as a hot male, because you want your offspring to have those traits. And somebody else called out here, what do females want in this category? And what was it you said? Good personality, yes. Able to express emotions, that too. OK, somebody else shouted out something that gets at the broader, more globally Oprah version. OK, somebody shouted out, parental behavior. 
You want a male who is going to be competent at raising your children. What is it that you want really most deeply? You want to get the male who is the most like a female you can get a hold of. You don't want some big old stupid guy with a lot of muscle and canines who's wasting energy on stuff like that that he could be using instead on, you know, reading Goodnight Moon or some such thing. <laughs> what you want instead is somebody who's as close to a female as you can get to without getting this lactation stuff. Males are chosen who are the same size as females. So the term given here is you know, choosing for paternal behavior, parental behavior, or parental, let's just put that in there. And that begins to explain the top line, species in which there's a lot of sexual dimorphism, morphism, shapes of things, sexual dimorphism, big difference in body size as a function of gender. And in these sorts of species where you get male parental behavior, not much variability, male reproductive success, low levels of regression, and what females want is a competent male, these are ones where you see low degrees of sexual dimorphism. So how's a f female going to figure out that this guy is going to be a competent parent? You know, once again, we just figured out if he looks kind of like you, because that suggests he hasn't wasted health and metabolism on stupid, pointless muscles when there's more important things in life for making sure your kids have good values. What else would the female want to know when she's first considering mating with the male? Is he a nice guy? Is he sensitive? Does he express his feelings? Is he competent at being a parent? What do you want the individual to do? Prove to you that he can provide for the kids. And suddenly you have a world of bird, male birds, courting the females by bringing them worms, bringing them evidence that they are able to successfully forage, they are able to get food. Female choice is built around appearance and behavioral competence at being able to be a successful parent in order to pass on as many copies of genes to the next generation as possible. OK, how about lifespan? In which species is there a big difference in life expectancy as a function of gender? First one, here you're choosing for males to be as close to females as possible, and that's the physiology. Here you got these guys who are like using huge amounts of energy to build up all this muscle, which takes a lot more work to keep in calories, and you're more vulnerable in famines. You've got these males with high testosterone, which does bad stuff to your circulatory system. You've got males who, thanks to all this aggression, are getting more injuries, more likely in species in which you have a lot of sexual dimorphism and body size, you get a lot of sexual dimorphism in lifespan. And then you look at these guys, and it's basically no difference by gender. Moving on, considering primates that are one of these two patterns, in which one do you always want to give birth to twins? In which one do you never want to give birth to twins? Who gives birth to twins? The one on the right, of course. How come? Because you got two parents on the scene. You were not a single mother, and you were a single mother rhesus monkey or something, and you give birth to twins, and you do not have the remotest chance of enough energy, enough calories on board to get both of them to survive. A twin that is born in a species like this has the same rate that it occurs in humans, about a 1% rate, and it is almost inevitable that one of them does not survive. Meanwhile, there's a whole world of primate species with this profile where the females always twin. Finally, you are the female, and you are con contemplating bailing out on your kids and disappearing because there's some really hot guy over there who you want to mate with, and you are trying to figure out this strategy. So you are going to leave and abandon your kids. In which species do you see that behavior? The one on the right. The one on the right because you bail out and the male is there taking care of them. You bail out in here and you've lost your investment and copies of your genes for the next generation. You see female cuckoldry, this great Victorian term. You see females cheating on the fathers in this species, but not in species like this because the father is long gone in you know, three other counties there courting somebody else. and. Doesn't matter, you're not going to get any help from him. In primate species of this profile, you always see twinning. And they both survive. And what studies have shown in these species, and we'll get to them shortly, is after birth, in fact, the males are expending more calories taking care of the offspring than the females. 
go bail out on him and go find some other hot guy, which in your species counts as some guy who looks even more like you than he does in terms of what you want out of the individual, so that 